So welcome to um, our first Leader in Me family informational session. Um, in the meantime, as we're like just pausing and, and kind of waiting for some more people to show up, I'm going to advance to the second slide, which will give us a little bit of an icebreaker. Um, I could advance. Let me go ahead and go here. And so in the chat bar, if you would like to go ahead and introduce yourself um, and then check out these awesome memes here um, and place one of the meme numbers into the chat bar too to let us know how you are feeling today. That's more people coming out, coming in from outside. Got some sevens, which is really awesome. We have a nine in there, totally. Um, We have an eight. We have another eight from Mr. Mitchum. Sabrina Vasquez says, wait, hold up. I have a four. Maybe we have multiple mean feelings today. And we'll go ahead and get started with the full presentation in about three more minutes, just so we can continue to wait if there's more individuals uh, that will be attending. Y'all hear that? Barely, but I'm laughing because you're like dancing to it. <laughs> you should see my daughter. She's like going like this. Is it on the computer that you're playing? Well, it, was, it was glitchy on my computer. So then I am using my cell phone. Nice. <laughs> and it's full volume. Well, we'll just. Pretend we're dancing with you too. <laughs> Everybody place, you know, your phone onto your own music and dance. Okay, we're at 305. We're gonna continue and move on. And at this point, we are recording this session, so it'll be pushed out to our families as well. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So welcome. All right, so welcome everyone, and thank you for attending. Uh, parent night with us here at Boulder Ridge. The single most important factor in whether a child will succeed in school is parent and family involvement. We realize that you are very busy and we appreciate you coming to spend time learning about the leader in me. Today we will be learning about what is leader in me. We will get into the heart of leadership what leadership looks like and explore each of the seven habits. Please feel free to add comments in the chat bar and we will also open up the floor for discussion. 
Again, enjoy the evening of leadership and success. Thank you, Mrs. Tomachoff. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lead us into the next slide. And this is just kind of the overarching idea of what Leader in Me is. And so I want you all to begin thinking about um, a forest. And so if we were in real life, this activity would probably be like way cooler, but <laughs> we're just gonna have to do this virtually at this point. Um, but think about, you know, outstretching your arms and just kind of imagining yourself within a forest. And you're looking at the forest and since you're on the outside of the forest at this point right now, um, it's easy for us to see how to get back away from that forest. But if you start walking into the forest, when you start getting deep into those trees, you'll notice that it's very easy to lose your way if you're deep into that forest. So what do you think would be something that would be beneficial for you once you started to enter that forest that could help you maybe find your way what type of tool might be best for us to use? We were in a forest, can't find our way. What tool could we use? Lighthouse team, do you want to guess at all? A compass. A compass. Ooh, and I have Maya Carter um, replying on that. Jessica Garcia, compass. And guess what? Y'all are pretty smart because look at that. It is a compass. <laughs> and so we really want to think about the seven habits as being that compass in life for us. Um, they're common sense and everyone in the room already knows them. However, what is common uh, sense is not always common practices for us. And so the seven habits help us in that forest of life. And these habits are not just about school, but they're about all of life. And that also would include your home. So that's what we're here today to, um, you know, bridge leader and me from school to home so that you have a compass for life. Okay, moving on to the next slide. And I don't know if any um, Lighthouse team members want to just like jump on like naturally when it comes to some of these slides, um, because you all have um, been teaching them for the past few years too. So I don't know if, if anybody wants to just jump in and, and take over too, that would be great. But I will go ahead and begin on this one. This is a brief overview of Leader and Me. Um, and so when we're talking about Leader and Me, we're really talking about um, again, uh, that compass for ourselves, those habits that are going to help us be successful in life. And Leader in Me was a process designed to help teachers to help support their students develop um, leadership skills. And so if you look at this slide here, you're noticing that not only are we trying to develop leadership skills, but there's so many other skills that are intertwined within that. And so you see that we're also trying to enhance the creativity and innovation for our students. I mean, especially if you think about at this time, um, our virtual setting, how innovative all of us have become um, because of, you know, not being able to be in real life with one another, being able to think critically, being able to communicate and collaborate, um, being flexible um, and having adaptability, initiate self-direction, social and cross-cultural skills, being able to be productive and accountable, and then also that leadership and responsibility element, which is, a, is obviously, um, you know, a no-brainer. Do any of our teachers or um, does our counselor or Mr. Mitchum, do you guys want to go ahead and uh, maybe discuss any of these that you've seen currently based on uh, the 2020-2021 school year? So as for myself, I am Mrs. Toledano, I'm the school counselor, and I actually utilize a lot of my school, my second step curriculum, and I infuse them into utilizing the seven habits. So in this um, month, the month of September, we are learning skills for success or skills for learning, um, which also can go into empathy and respect. 
and how all of those, the, the tools for um, skills for learning utilizes respect and empathy, which is seek first to understand, then to be understood, and also with, with respect, habit number five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Oh. oh go ahead. <laughs> Mitchum. Zana. <laughs> okay. Is he going? Okay. Okay, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at um, really, you know, this this page here and going through, you know, our teachers have almost been forced to, you know hit all of these boxes in their daily instruction and, and with their students um, just because of the situation that we're in as a, as a district and as a school and as a world right now. Um, so that ability to really problem solve, you know, we're, we have to have students who know how to problem solve right now, whether it's technology issues or a glitch in the computer and not being able to log on, et cetera. And so our teachers are actually teaching them these soft skills um, on a daily basis as well. So communicating, right, um, having initiative and self-direction are things that, you know, by default this year, our teachers are having to teach our students. But again, a lot of this stuff is stuff that as parents and, and family members, right, you're teaching them at home as well. And so. Um, I'm really excited and amped on the leader in me um, because these are all skills that our kids are going to need in order to succeed in the world, um, not just in school. Cool. Susanna? Yeah, so um, I was just going to say I teach fifth grade and some of the, the two that stood out to me were the flexibility um piece because we have so many fifth graders and, and many students struggling with um lagging internet um and chromebooks not loading and so we've been really teaching that flexibility piece that you know not to give up and if you get logged out of the meet to keep trying so it's we're we're helping the kids to take responsibility not just to rely on things that they can't control and then the second thing would be that productivity and accountability so now more than ever our students are having to be productive without whether their uh, their teacher monitoring everything that they're doing in a classroom or their parents being at home I know personally in my class I have many parents who are either gone working or they're working from home and there's nobody that's with them 24 seven watching their work. So really that discussion piece of when you're not on the live meet with me or if you get off of the internet, we're not just sitting there and you know, I have nothing to do so I'm gonna go play video games or my teacher's not on the meet so I'm gonna go eat a snack and take a break. We're really talking about how do I be productive when somebody's not watching everything that I'm doing, continuing doing my assignment, um, messaging my teacher or asking somebody for help. And so those are the two that stood out for me as far as um, what's happening right now with, with our students. Thank you for sharing. I definitely feel um, these elements that are presented here in front of us right now are just really what we're living day, day to day with. And so um, again, Leader and Me will bridge us to um, eventually you know, establishing those habits within our life on a daily basis. I want to go ahead and play this video here um, because it comes from Leader and Me and it just gives a nice background of how um, Leader and Me has affected not only our school site but school sites worldwide. And hopefully it'll work well. Thumbs up if you see it, yes? Cool, and now let's try to press play. Hi, my name is Walter. I'm a leader at A.B. College Elementary in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome to a school where everyone is empowered to be a leader. Hi, I'm Ava. And I'm Joseph. Hi, my name is Ching Ching. Hi, my name is Muhammad. Hello, my name is Catherine. Hi, I'm Greta. And I'm Neil. Welcome to our school! 
You may pass by our school and think we are just an ordinary school. The building itself is about 50 years old. But the moment you come inside, there's a whole new feeling. We are a magnet school, and in 1999, we weren't attracting very many students. We had at that time around 350. And our superintendent said that we needed to reinvent ourselves. We needed to come up with a theme that was like none other. We went to our key stakeholders, our business leaders, parents, community leaders, and we said, what is it that you want for this community? Whether it was the parents or the business leaders, they all wanted students who were responsible, could get along well with others, and deal with the challenges that life brought them. Parents want their child to grow up to be caring, responsible, compassionate. Uh, they wanted their children to give back to others. They wanted them to understand a very strong work ethic. Our stakeholders, when creating this school, talked about having children and grandchildren that were A students mastering the SAT, and then were not successful in college because they didn't know how to work with students. They didn't know how to prioritize. They were only about the academics. When I heard all of those characteristics of what parents were looking for, I knew at that moment that schools had to do things differently. That when we're only focused on the academic piece, and absolutely that is important, but there's so much more than that. We captured their thoughts and ideas in a theme. And that theme screamed leadership to us. The theme of our school is leadership. Our mission is to develop leaders one child at a time. Our mission keeps us focused on what's most important. At our school, you can be a leader in anything you want. I am a leader in art. I'm a leader in music. I'm a leader in helping others. I'm a leader in sports. I'm a leader in technology. We are all leaders. At our school, Leadership is doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. We are developing 21st century citizens. We're giving them a skill set, one that is based on leadership development, doing the right thing. Um, we're giving the children a set of skills that will take them through the rest of their lives. We're not trying to create CEOs of companies. We're trying to help students figure out what they are interested in and how to be the best in that area. From the time we enter kindergarten until the time we graduate, we are told we are leaders because we all have gifts. We believe very strongly that all students possess unique gifts and talents, and it's our responsibility as educators to find out what those talents are and to nurture and develop um, the children's gifts. I see each child as having um, something special about them that nobody else has, and it's my job to help them to discover that gift. And I might be the only person in their life that sees that gift in them, and that it's, it's my responsibility to show it to them. And I, I know for us as a staff, we've gone through this Leader in Me journey for a few years now, and it's actually really refreshing to go back and, and see that video in the sense of it kind of grounds you back into like why we started this journey in the first place and really just, um, you know, puts it in perspective for us that we're doing this because we want to help support each individual child to become a leader. And then like the uh, teacher at the very end said, you know, really um, establishing how each child is unique and that they have a gift. And so again, that's what we're trying to do here at Boulder Ridge. And so we really appreciate families coming tonight and, um, you know, just learning, learning about the habits. Bye, Mrs. Tolmachoff. We'll, we have this recorded, so we will post it and you can check out the rest. Thank you. So moving on, um, a little bit of a background story. Hold on. On, um, you know, Leader and Me. Um, this this might be something that's possibly familiar to you families um, from the past. Uh, we we know that the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People has been um, a bestseller by Stephen Covey, and that was back in 1989. And he was um, an, he it, he was an individual who went ahead and um, supported businesses, corporations. Um, government offices and, and even you know, universities in these seven habits. And later on down the road, um, I, I can't believe, I, is it his son? Is it, was it Sean Covey, his son? Yes. Okay. Sean Covey, his son, uh, transformed it into more of a, a teenage type of life direction. 
And then from there, you see it even being applied to our elementary age students. And the principle that was shown on that previous uh, video, I believe she was the one that began the Leader in Me at the elementary level. So um, just noticing that obviously Stephen Covey's habits have been around for quite a while. They still hold up to today and are um, something great to give to our students. Are there any other comments from um, our Lighthouse team or any um, other items you wanted to add on this one? No? Good. Okay, let's jump into our habits. So habit one, being proactive. This is where we're going to school you guys on habits. Family. So I get to start, right? You do. You do. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, habit one, this is the first habit that we teach the students, and it's all about being proactive. So them being responsible, taking initiative, they're the ones who chooses their actions, their attitudes, the mood, the words, and taking that responsibility. They don't put blame on others for their actions. Um, kind of that thing that they do the right, they make the right choice when nobody's looking, whether it's at recess on the playground, whether it's at home when our, we're not with them. Um, so we want you guys to type in the chat bar as we, um, we're gonna have some statements that pop up, whether or not they're being proactive or reactive. So the reactive would just be that reactive behavior, kind of that, reacting without thinking, um, and then proactive being the positive perspective. All right, so here we go. Teachers can play along too. So the first scenario, your neighbor's leaves are all over your yard. You go over and yell at him. So type in the chat if that's proactive or reactive. Yes, woohoo, reactive. Someone <laughs> cuts you off in traffic, so you tailgate them and ride closely behind them. Is that proactive behavior or reactive? Yes, that would be reactive behavior. Necessary behavior. <laughs> uh, your feelings get hurt, but you realize the person's having a bad day, so you let it go. Would that be proactive or reactive? It reminds me of the song, let it go, let it go. <laughs> yes, proactive. Your boss is in a bad mood, but you don't let it affect you. As I have two bosses on here right now. <laughs> yes, that would be proactive. And I think we have one more. Your friend planned to meet you for lunch, but didn't show up, so you left them a nasty message. Ooh, yes, Ms. Vasquez, she was first, reactive. So these are scenarios that obviously apply to us as adults, but we use many different scenarios with our students um, throughout the week and everything that we do, not only Leader in Me, but all different types of activities with our language arts, our math, personal things that happen at home as well. So that is habit one, be proactive. Okay, so habit two, I'm um, Mrs. Rebe. I teach first grade. Um, and so habit two is uh, we begin with the end in mind. So basically we're teaching the students to set goals and um, create a plan to reach those goals um, and kind of instilling that the students um, do things that have meaning and make a difference. Um, and it also is kind of shows that they are helping us get towards our classroom's mission statement and vision. So it's just a it's like an important part. Um, they're an important part of our school. So um, 
And then a way we can do this at home is like create a structured routine. Um, and then um, work with families to design priorities based on needs and goals. Um, it's kind of interesting to do this. So in the chat box, um, what are some priorities in, in your household? I'll put mine. Mine is family. That's a really big family. That's a very, very big priority in my household. So look at all those awesome love, family, working out, taking care of my animals is awesome. Um, so it's just kind of important. It's just kind of, it's a good thing. It's, it's hard to do at first, but it's important to kind of come to terms on with a priority for your, for your um, household and just kind of go for a plan. What is, what do you want to achieve this year? It's going to be, it's going to be one of those years that is going to be difficult, but our goal is to be here and support you and um, get the students ready for the for the following year. So that's habit two. Thank you, Mrs. Yerbe. And we are going to move to habit number three. Hold on, I've got to switch on over here. Okay. And let's see. There we go. Okay. Do any of our teachers or Lighthouse team want to take on habit three? If not, I'll go ahead and uh, speak on it. Sure, I can. Okay, cool. So habit three, put first things first. Um, and so this is the, the last habit that, so habits one through three are all about the self. Um, so that's when we're getting students to focus on the things that they have control over. And so habit three would be putting first things first. So spending time on things that are important. So you can see the pictures of the rocks, what we call the big rocks. And so really getting them to understand what their priorities are. So what are those important things that I need to take care of before I get to the small rocks? So maybe you guys can share in the chat some of your big rocks um, that you have to make sure that happens before any of those small rocks do. And we always teach them that, oh, yes, Sabrina, your chores, that would be a, that's a really good one. Um, so doing chores, coming to school, those are all your big rocks before you can play video games, watch YouTube, hang out with your friends. <laughs> as you can see, my children are also <laughs> here as well. Maybe your children need to be a part of it too. <laughs> part of the informational session. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, homework and chores, definitely. And maybe even going back to that. Um, to what people were saying um, on the previous slide, like love and family and making sure that those are priorities too in our life because those are the things that provide happiness to us. Mm -hmm. Right, finding that balance, um, finding that balance, definitely. So thank you for sharing your big rocks. I'm gonna go to habit number four. And we actually have a little video from Stephen Covey himself. Um, I thought this was kind of a, a fun way to show um, kind of what Stephen Covey's like personality and kind of like his vibe. Um, he's very like calm and peaceful, but he has a really great way to um, show what it means to live think win-win. And it is based off of kind of a prior past experience with him in his life. Um, so he's a really great storyteller. I'll go ahead and play that. My little son agreed in a family meeting to take care of the yard. I will, Dad. Son, your job is green and clean. Let me show you what green looks like, son. Let's go over to our neighbor's house. <laughs> That's the color we're after, son. <laughs> clean means... Let's clean up half of it. Now notice that compared to that. 
That's green and clean, son. Your job is green and clean. Now, son, how you do that is up to you. I'd tell her how I do it if you want. How'd you do it, Dad? I turn on the sprinklers. <laughs> but you may want to use buckets or hose or spit all day long. <laughs> all we care about is what, son? Green and clean. What's green look like? Good. What's clean? Good. It's your job, son. Guess who your boss is, son? Who? You boss yourself. Guess who your helper is? Who? I am. You boss me. I do? But if I ever have any time, you need help. You just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And guess who judges you, son? That's right. You judge yourself. How do you think you judge yourself, son? Green and clean. What's green now? What's clean now? Good. Is that a deal, son? You think about it for a day or two. It's Saturday. How do you feel, son? I'll do it. Do what? Green and clean. How? It's up to me. Who's your boss? I boss myself. Who judges you? I judge myself. How do you judge yourself? Green and clean. What's green? Good. Clean? Good. Who's your helper? You are if you have time. What if I don't have time? I gotta do green and clean. Is that a deal, son? Deal. Deal was made. He did nothing. <laughs> nothing all that Saturday. All that Sunday. Monday. It's Tuesday morning. Going to work. Hot. Summer day. Burning up. Yellowing. Neighbor's yard. Green and clean. Manicured. Garbage strewn right down the side lawn from a Saturday night barbecue. Falling out the bottom of the sack. Three feet from my car. I could rationalize a little away Saturday and Sunday. But Monday, this is inexcusable. I was ready to move to win-lose. <laughs> now, son, you get out there. You get over here. Or I'm telling the moment you do, you kill the goose. You kill effectiveness. You go for efficiency. Yeah, he'll clean that up. And what happens tomorrow when you're not there? <sighs> Bite your tongue. Reaffirm your purpose. Raise boys, not grass. <laughs> I'll see what it looks like tonight. Could hardly wait to get home. Driving, going around the corner, there where my yard was. Tuesday afternoon, more cluttered, more yellow than ever. My son across the street, playing ball. I was burning. We'd agree that we'd walk around the yard twice a week. He'd show me how it's going. Hi, son. How you doing? Just fine, Dad. I was faking it totally. <laughs> How's it going in the yard, son? Just fine, Dad. I bit my tongue. After dinner, why don't we walk around? You can show me how it's going. Before we got to the door, you could see his lip. <laughs> By the time we got out in the front yard, just open bawling. So hard. I mean, what was hard? He hadn't done one single thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what hard is. It's moving up the level of initiative. You cannot hold people responsible for results if you supervise their methods. Any you want me to do to help, son? Would you? What was our agreement? So you'd help me if you had time. I've got time. You do? I'll be right back. Ran in the house, came out with two sacks. He handed me one, he took one. That's when he signed the win-win agreement. And he only asked for help a couple more times that entire summer. It's his job. It takes time to set up the agreement and to reaffirm it. Tennessee is to backslide on it when you see mistakes. Keep believing in the people. Holding them accountable in the way agreed. So again, just, you know, reflecting on the win-win and how we can be supportive to our students and to our children um, by, you know, sometimes showing them the way um, and being uh, that helper if needed. Moving on to habit number five which is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Yes, and this is, um, I listen to other people and, under, and ideas and feelings. I try to see from their viewpoint. I listen to others without interrupting. I listen with my ears, eyes, and heart. I'm confident in voicing my ideas. 
So students here, um, let's see, for this activity, I wanna see if you can type it in the chat box, there's gonna be some animation and I wanna see what you can get out of seeing this visual. And, and it has to do with feelings. <laughs> Your turn. How does this person feel? Happy, content, comfortable, good. Yes, I, everybody's pretty much typing in happy, but I also like to add additional feelings with my students. And a lot of the teachers also use different types of feelings that matches with happy, joyful, laughter, content. Next feeling. How does this one feel? Yeah, sad, or having those un upset, bored. <laughs> um, so it's important for our students to also be able to see different perspectives. And what I teach as a school counselor, and also a lot of our teachers help out as well, is looking for those facial cues. How are they feeling? How, how can you tell? Okay, you can tell because of their facial features, but also their body language. Next feeling. Mad, grumpy, angry, uncomfortable feeling, right? And we talk about those uncomfortable feelings and frustration and how to manage those but also having the empathy piece to seek first to understand how other person is feeling so we can help support each other. Next feeling. <laughs> this is super mad. Frustrated, I'd say, yeah. Overwhelm, for sure, and these feelings are all acceptable feelings. Even though they're big emotions, these are acceptable feelings. And what we have our students understand that, yes, you have, you are allowed to feel overwhelmed, angry, upset, frustrated. You're, you're allowed to have those feelings, but what you do and how you react to those feelings is what's important. Next feeling. Stress, yes. Nervous, worried, worry, yes. And I also, as part of the school counseling program, I also provide students with coping skills. Okay, so we understand, we seek to understand how the other person's feeling, but also we need to be aware of how we are feeling so we can get our day um, going smoothly. Next feeling. I don't know about this one. It could be so many. <laughs> Distracted. <laughs> yes, wonder. <laughs> yes. So I, yes. I think it's important for other students and also ourselves to understand how we are feeling and having the students be that self-awareness so they can carry on their day and carrying on those positive, healthy relationships with their peers and with their students. Therefore, implying respect and empathy. So habit number five is really seek first to understand, then to be understood. Thank you, Mrs. Toledano. Habit number six, synergizing. Anybody want to take this one? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? I don't mind. You don't? Thank no. you. <laughs> this is another one of, uh, I'll do my favorites. Simple driving. Um, so this is where we not only work together, but where we work together for, let's say, one common goal. So we realize other people's strengths and learn from them learning to get a well 
get along well with others, um, even though the other people may have different perspectives or ideas. Obviously, working in groups, um, but you also we also seek to hear other people's ideas because when you hear other people's ideas, and that only um, fosters what that goal could be, uh, and possibly looking for a third alternative. So not my way, not your way, but what's that third way that we can come up with together and add each other's strengths to that. I didn't memorize it. Okay, so leadership roles at home. Um, so these are some of the roles that uh, leader and me had. We do have roles in our classroom. So we have students that are doing leadership roles virtually, whether it's coming up with the quote of the day for our classroom, whether it's tutoring kids online. So these are some ideas for our kids to have leadership roles at home which is so valuable. And I know it looks a lot different at home because I have kids at home as well. And it's kind of like, oh, uh, it's my parents telling me to do something. But when you use that leader in me um, language and you make it kind of sound like it's coming from a place that uh, like they're already doing at school, it translates much easier. I so wish my boys were doing this program at their school. Um, so it's kind of like trying to teach these habits um, without them kind of realizing it. But we're already doing all of this work at our school. So your kids are used to it. And so now it's a way for you guys to make them have that um, buy-in at home. How can they contribute and have a voice at home? Even though parents are in charge, how can they still have a voice at their home? Thank you. And I will let parents know um, all of these um, items that you're seeing here, these graphic organ organizers and whatnot, um, or just like charts are going to be available to you. I'm going to be pushing them out um, to the teachers so they can also go ahead and send them out to you as well. Mr. Mitchum, did you have something else you wanted to share? Yeah, just to kind of tag along with what uh, Mrs. Lozano was sharing. I have two beautiful tiny humans in my life who um, both go to school here. And so they are getting this um, seven habit training, if you will, on a daily basis. Um, my one daughter is in second grade now. And so this is her third year with these habits and being exposed to them. Um, and I will tell you, like, it makes mine and my wife's parenting uh, a lot easier. Um, especially when the two students, my two students, my two kids um, are arguing about something, right? We always ask them, you know, are you synergizing? How do we think win-win about this? Um, whether it's, you know, they want to go outside and play and ride their bikes at 9 a.m., but they haven't finished their activities for the day for school, right? We get to say, like, are you putting first things first? And so um, a lot of these these skills and these habits are things that do translate really wonderfully from the school setting and the classroom into the home. Um, and so we do, we have leadership roles in our, in our home and our daughters have, right. Well, we would say like somebody said chores. Um, so, but we have leadership roles. And so we try to empower them, um, you know, whether it's cleaning the dishes or feeding the dogs or taking the dogs for walks, um, we don't call them chores as so much as this is your leadership role and how you're going to give back to our family um, in a really copacetic, beautiful way. Um, so that, that's my thoughts on that. Thank you for sharing. And I really like right. that idea of translating the idea of chores to more or less leadership roles gives the students more buy-in and your children more buy-in. Yeah. And they still ask for money. So it's, you know. Hey, think win-win. Think win-win. <laughs> okay, so we're now going to transition to our final habit, which is probably one of the most important habits, especially during this time of, you know, so much stress and uncertainty that took place uh, since, you know, our, our closures of school in March. Um, and even for you as families, as parents, you know, the things that you guys have been having to deal with um, and the big changes going on. Um, but that's sharpening the saw. And what we go ahead and let students know is that it's also important for us to not only um, respect the way that we interact with others and making sure we have, um, you know, we are proactive, but we also need to take care of ourselves. And that looks like by, um, you know, practicing healthy habits, making sure we're eating right, making sure we're getting exercise, we're getting enough sleep. Um, because really, when you're thinking about it, 
we need balance. And so they, they say in the leader in me, it's almost like thinking about a car. And so four tires are needed to operate smoothly. Um, and we need all of these four parts, which is eating right, exercise, sleep, um, and also making sure that our brains are being nourished. Oh, wait, I didn't even go through those parts. Okay, so we have the body, the brain, the heart, and the soul. Um, so those are like the, um, you know, the core elements of a car, of your four tires. Those are the core elements of us as individuals in order for us to make sure that we're good um, to go and be good for ourselves and good for others as well. So again, you as well, parents, make sure that you're sharpening your saw and making sure that you're practicing your healthy habits to make sure that you know you're you're good with yourself as well. And so then um, from that, this is those are all of our seven habits. So we want to just open up this time for you, um, families, if you would like to go ahead and share or um, ask questions at this point about Leader and Me. Um, feel free to go ahead and do that. You can either unmute yourself and speak, or you can also place it in the comment bar. Oh, Mrs. Toledano is bringing up habit number eight. Do you want to speak on that habit, um, Mrs. Toledano? Because it sometimes isn't always represented within like some of the leader in me materials. It's a new habit. Um, it's finding your voice for students. And what that looks like is really utilizing their assertive skills. So whether that be like the virtual setting, hey, um, you're muted, Miss um, Mrs. Hills, and, and using their assertive skills in a respectful manner to get to communicate their needs. Um, so yes, finding their voice is a habit that is good because we need to hear their voice. We need um, from their perspective as well. Um, this habit, I, I kind of blinked out. <laughs> and I think it also goes in with showing kindness, right? Um, if we show kindness, they can utilize their voice to even start with a smile and start with hello. That makes other people feel good just with a simple hello. Um, how you doing? Um, and, and creating a really a culture of kindness uh, and utilizing or standing up for somebody who may be um, is a, a situation of social injustice. And, and I think this is a really important habit um, being done assertively in a respectful manner, utilizing all the ha seven habits previously before this one. And as you notice that many of these habits are numbered in it or are in order for a certain reason. It's usually these things happen first and then it happens to be um, eight to be the last one because you need to use, utilize all the previous habits prior to that. I think that's really great to mention that, um, that they kind of fall in order um, to eventually you know, be a result of habit number eight. Yeah, one of, um the, I guess, images that they utilize to um, portray the seven habits, eight habits, um, is a tree. And the first three habits are really about yourself. Um, and so when we look at those habits, it really is like an internal, they're internal habits. They're things that only you can do. Um, whereas when you look at four through seven, those are habits that do require other people. And so when we talk about a tree, right, like as it grows and it gets bigger, that's these habits and the impact they have on your community. But if you don't start with the roots and what what's important, which is yourself and your um, just your mindset and your belief system, then you can't reach that that growth. If your tree has bad roots, your tree won't grow. And so those habits one, two and three are really the roots um, of these habits. So that being said, parents, too, um, we are hoping to make this more of a monthly occurrence of visiting Leader in Me um, and just, um, you know, opening up to families to be able to gain some resources that you can utilize at home that would be beneficial um, with 
the habit. So are there any things, are, are there any topics in particular that um, families might want to go ahead and explore in our future meetings? Um, you can feel free to go ahead and, and speak or you can also put it in the chat. So we could craft our next meetings to make sure that we're, um, you know, addressing things that parents are particularly looking um, at for support. It's that wait time, huh, guys? <laughs> and it seems like forever. <laughs> well, know that definitely we're going to be having some really great topics um, for you all in the future. And if you ever have suggestions of what you would like to um, maybe learn about or have discussions around, uh, please feel free to go ahead and, um, you know, shoot us emails. Um, and, and we can craft our sessions to be more specific as to what you guys need. Um, but besides that, I, we want to just say thank you for coming, leaving you with uh, Stephen Covey's uh, quote here, leadership is communicating a person's worth and potential so clearly that they are inspired to see it in themselves. And so we're just here to help support and inspire your students. And we hope that also translates in your home as well. And I will put a little plug out there. We do have an ELAC meeting happening on Monday. Ms. Toledano, is it at 3 o'clock, I believe? Okay, yes. So a yes. virtual ELAC meeting is on Monday. Um, all are welcomed. It's um, our English learner. What does the A stand for? Committee? Why can't I? Advisory. <gasps> Thank you. It's a good word, advisory. English Learner Advisory Committee. Um, so feel free to come and join in on that conversation as well. Does any of our Lighthouse team or teachers have any ending thoughts for our families? I just want to say I'm very grateful for you taking the time out of your day to be with us and to learn, uh, be a part of your, your child or in student's learning experience. Um, this is a great... Um, way to be involved and the more you are involved the more this your students will know your commit their commitment to these habits and just to education in general Okay, we're good. Thank you everyone for coming. And I will have this recording up on maybe like our uh, social media platforms and school site website, but have a wonderful evening and we'll see you guys soon. Bye.